welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thanks to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel. So thanks. A number of months ago, I purchased this really cool little spring loaded syringe on eBay. It's from a Chinese brand called Fan Mu. Now, I don't believe it was named after a killer whale. He's a little shy. Put your hands together for Sham Peter. I'm not shy, I'm angry. I'm in constant pain. This act has been condemned by over 30 nations. I'm gonna kill you all. But it has been very handy for syringe filling cartridges and doing general cleaning and maintenance. Then I noticed a listing for a pen from the same Fan Mu brand with the same spring-loaded piston but they put a fountain pen nib and section on the front of it. Cool idea. So I bought one. Now I've had this pen for more than a month and it has a generic number five size steel nib on it. I've been holding off doing a review because I also purchased a custom ground architect italic steel nib from Bobby on eBay. I wanted to try out the new architect italic in this very cool pen. And now that the nib has arrived, let's spring into the review right now. Fan move. Architects. So this is another unboxing and this video was shot January 4th, 2021. And unfortunately, something went wrong with my mic. And so I'm going to do a little bit of audio Foley work. Those of you who have know about film will know that this is audio foley and snip 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 try to get that open and see what the package has inside snip 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 find the package and try to pull the pen out from inside here. A pen inside a pouch. And we pull that out. And this was metal section for my 601 Wing Sung. Crinkle, crinkle. But let's look at the pen. Here we are. This is a Fan Mu and it is a spring filler in a lovely summer color this is my fan Mu syringe filler spring syringe that uh, i bought a while back and this pen is by the same company fan Mu. and we'll open it up and get the pen out but it's condom there we go and we look at the pen. Here's my pen BBS nib charm. Looks very much like this acrylic. And we will clean this pen out and do a review. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. But first I want to show you how I filled this pen for the first time after swapping the nib. Uh, here is the nib that I pulled. This is the nib that came out of the unit. It's a generic number five steel nib that says Iridium Point Germany. And here is the nib that I replaced it with. Same nib basically just without the word Germany. The nib is in a unit that unscrews very easily but I pulled the nib out and pushed in the new Bobby Architect italic nib in uh, just a couple of seconds. The nibs are functionally identical. So here's the video that I shot. So I thought I'd film this portion of the review uh, where I have taken the Fan Mu Spring nib out and replaced it with a Bobby Custom Architect grind that I just received. So you can see how uh, he's shaved it down so it's a vertical slit shaved down the sides and this is a uh, probably a medium to a fine 
so it's not going to have a huge amount of line variation like if it was cut from a broad like on this broad Bach Leonardo nib that Jack custom ground for me it's got a much um, larger tipping material to work with and so therefore it has a larger writing surface on it that they both have that same kind of profile that vertical slit that uh, gives you a thin vertical line and a wide horizontal line so I'm going to ink this pen up using the spring filler I've uh, put a little bit of I've rinsed that out a little bit so that it's uh, clean and I open this up and put a little bit of silicone grease on those threads there is a silicone o-ring right there and we're going to use Robert Oster soda pop blue and it's in my little ink buddy stabilizer you can get these on my son's Etsy store 3d printed and I'll put that link in the description and you can also get them for diamine 30 milliliter bottles so there's a stabilizer for that and I've just made a new one for the Noodler's 3 ounce bottle you'll be able to get those ink buddies soon on James's site as well so let's open this bottle up dip it down into the ink and actually it does pretty well do that a couple of three times get all of the bubbles out put the cap back on clean off the section and we got a pretty full fill there I'd say so now we'll see how it writes now let's look at the pen overall it is a good size as you can see when I put it next to my Jin House Centennial and it's made of a lovely translucent acrylic that is suspiciously close to the pen BBS acrylic summer here is one of my pen BBS uh, nib charms in the color summer and you can see that they look very very similar and say they're from the same rod stock wouldn't you the pen is also reminiscent of the double-ended pen BBS model 469 here's one in Galaxy the difference of course is that the FAMU does not have nibs on both ends we see a flat top finial with a chamfered round edge and then the cap tapers up to about here where it is straight to a rounded end of the cap and there is no clip of course there's a very small step down very tiny to a three millimeter red anodized aluminum band with the name fan Mu screened in block letters in white this is also very reminiscent of another Chinese fountain pen and that is the moon man m2 those bands are pretty much identical in size and material and printing other than the word the transparent acrylic barrel is straight to another red anodized aluminum band that says a fan moo as well and then the cap for the back end of the pen which covers the spring mechanism so the pen is completely symmetrical the cap unscrews with one and a quarter turns to reveal a concave section of the same acrylic as the double caps and with a small flare towards a number five size steel nib and plastic feed as I just mentioned the nib and feed are part of color assembly which unscrew very very easily uh, and they are friction fit in there as well so they pull very easily as well these cap threads and the step from the barrel are very smooth and unobtrusive the only difference between the bobby nib and this one that came with it is the word Germany which should be taken with a grain of salt Peter you know I never realized that the Third Reich meant Germany I mean it's drenched with historical goodies like that this section unscrews from the barrel and has a silicone o-ring oh 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 you know what I'm talking uh oh <laughs> right there that I've sealed with some silicone grease as well this gives you access to the ink chamber 
for maintenance, which is good because the back end of this pen does not come off. Inside of the cap is a small step that is milled into the cap that meets up with the top of the threads of the section right here to uh, seal the cap. The cap does not post. Unposted, the pen is nicely comfortable in the hand. Though the section is long enough, it is a bit narrow for my grip here, closer to the nib. But when held back here with my thumb on the, on the barrel part, it works actually very nicely. This is a very, very light pen, weighing in around 13 and a half grams unposted. Another cool thing about this pen is that when it's capped and it has the right amount of ink in it, it acts like a spirit level. If it only had a flattened side to it, like a Moonman C1, it wouldn't roll around so much. But uh, you can see that I'm not on the level. And that actually reminds me of a ancient Chinese proverb, man who made love on hill, not on level. Ah, that's so funny, I forgot to laugh. <laughs> so perhaps a few seconds on a belt sander will flatten one side out and it can be a really nice spirit level. The back end of the cap, unscrews to reveal the piston mechanism and the caps are identical to each other so you can swap them back and forth. In fact, this looks so much similar to my Fan Moo spring syringe. Although the spring syringe seems to have a larger ink chamber, they look like almost the same parts, don't they? Let's find out. Is this pen barrel and spring plunger the same part and therefore compatible with the FANMU syringe. Well, let's find out, shall we? All we have to do is take the syringe needle off there, unscrew the front of the FANMU syringe. There we go. Take the top section off the barrel, and then, oh, okay, now we have a problem. We have to put the pen somewhere. I'm going to put it here. Right there is my little ink buddy caddy and then we see whether the section will go on the syringe spring what do you know look at that bingo bingo of course that cap won't go on there anymore but it does tell you that those are the same parts. And how many of you clever inquiring minds just had the thought that was running through my head just now? Will the M2 Moonman fit this section? Let's find out. Take the section out of the M2 and what do you know? Look at that. Well, 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 the Dormouse said. We will just have to draw pictures of things with an M, such as mouse traps, memory, and muchness. In fact, I might have to draw things with an M like Moon Man M2, Fan Moo, because I like the section on the M2 better than this Fan Moo. So I think there may be a Franken Fan Moo on the horizon. The only thing we have to find out is, will this? It won't. There you go. Well, at least we found out that all these parts are compatible with each other. And of course, it begs the question, doesn't it? Is Fan Moo Moon Man? Or when is a Moon Man not a Moon Man? When it's a Fan Moon Man? It certainly looks like they're all the same parts. It also looks like we can't complain that Fan Moo has stolen the uh, spring design from Moon Man. Here is the Moon Man T2 spring filler mechanism as well. They are close in principle, but not in practice. I bought this pen from Bobby's Etsy store, Chinese pen, for $20.50 US. And the custom architect italic nib was from Bobby as well, and it was $14 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Fan Mu spring filler with a Jinhao Centennial, just because the links are similar. And the acrylics are similar as well. And the aforementioned Moonman M2, a Moonman T2 spring filler, 
and a Pen BBS 500 spring filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, them that will post. You notice that the FANMU and the 500 do not post. The M2 is the only one that posts well. And as far as nibs go, this is the number 5, that's the number 5. That's not a Moon Man number 5. Uh, that's a replacement stub nib that I put in. And this is not a Moon Man nib either. That's a Fullen broad nib that I bought to see whether I could grind my own nibs. I haven't gotten to it yet. And of course that's an Amber is a Cat number 6 steel nib from Pen BBS that has paw prints on it. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <laughs> And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Fan Moo Spring Filler. And it has a custom made architect italic uh, steel nib. made by Bobby. Let's check the wetness. This pen is decently wet. The nib is smooth with a bit of feedback. It wasn't exactly like this when I wrote with it first. Here's an image of the first writing. It was scratchy to the upper right direction, uh, but a little work with some 8,000 and then 12,000 grit micromesh got it smoother. The horizontal stroke on the architect nibs are wider, of course, and the vertical stri uh, strokes are uh, thinner. And that's the idea of them. They're like an opposite to a stub. So it has more surface area when you write horizontally in either direction. So it's not surprising they get more feedback in those directions. And the ink today is Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue. Thought it was a nice match for this summer acrylic. And here are some close matches from Chris Sands inkswatch.com site. On my Richard Binder chart, the vertical line from this pen is a 0.3 millimeter, which makes it a Western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine to fine. And the horizontal line is 0.5 millimeters, which is a Western fine and a Japanese fine to medium. So we're getting some, uh, some nice line variation. And as the line variation, uh, there again is the vertical stroke, horizontal stroke. So We're getting some variation just because of the grind. And I've discovered that writing and printing with an architect grind is more pleasant for me than with, say, a stub. Of course, this is a fine nib that was ground into an architect italic. So you're not going to get as wide a variation uh, as, if, as if you had started with a broad. Here is the broad nib on my Momento Zero Blue Hawaii that uh, Jack cut into an architect italic. And its vertical line to horizontal line is a much more dramatic. And so 
I get a much more paintbrush type writing out of it. But it's the same idea. In this pen it's just a little bit more subtle. And for our quote, So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, the pen certainly has novelty. It works a lot better than my Moonman M2, as a matter of fact, which continues to suffer from seized piston syndrome no matter how much grease I put on it. After it's inked for a while, it just seizes up. And I think it's very cool from a fountain pen geek point of view that the section is interchangeable with both the Fanmu Spring and the Fanmu Fountain Pen. And even more interesting that it's compatible with the M2 Fountain Pen. And the fact that it comes with a generic number five size nib that's easily replaceable uh, is kind of cool as well. You can get any number of number five steel nib replacements for it. In fact, I replaced the number five nibs in both my Moonman M2s, um, one with a 0.7 millimeter stub and one with a 1.1 millimeter stub. So I'm pretty sure that this Architect Italic from Bobby uh, would fit into this pen, but that's an experiment for another time. I was a Colonel in the Fall Legion. Is that before or after you were a professor at Economics? No, in between I was a croupier in Monte Carlo, but that's another story. There's not much negative about the pen, except if you prefer a clip or a pen that posts or one that won't roll off your desk. The section is on the skinny side, but the pen is comfortable to write with and a lovely acrylic. It also comes in a green acrylic. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.